Hello? <coughs> Hello? Yeah, Vidya. Ah. Hello? Yes, sir. Sagar is there? Sir, I cannot hear you. Your voice is very low. Can you hear me now? Yeah, now it's clear. Right. different uh, types of Hello? Sir, your voice is breaking actually. I cannot hear you clearly. Hello? Yeah. I... Hello? One second please. I think it's in the top. Yeah. Can you hear me right now? Yes, I can hear you. Is it audible? Yes, sir. So in the last session we have discussed about the different types of users, right? The business users, the business managers, developers and implementers. Once again the developers and implementers are categorized into three, right? The process architect, the system architect and the system administrator, right? So these are the three types of the people who actually they are going to build the PRPC applications or build the applications using the PRPs, right? The first one, among them, the first one is the process architect. The first one is the process architect. A process architect can also be called as a business analyst. <coughs> or a business architect. A process architect can also be called as a business analyst are the business architect, right? Do you have any idea what the business analyst is going to do? Right. Right. So, is going to gather the requirements from the customer, right? Collect requirements from the customer and based on the gathered requirements, he'll uh, define and manage the business rules, right? Based on the gathered requirement, he'll define and manage the business rules. He'll also define the processes or workflows and he's also responsible for defining SLAs, that is service level agreements, service level agreements, right? Okay, so a process architect is, can also be called as a business analyst or the business architect who actually collects the requirements from the customer, right? Based on the gathered requirements is going to define and manage the business rules. So based on the business rules, he'll also define the processes, nothing but the workflows. He'll uh, define the skeleton of the workflows, how the workflow should be, right? So he's also responsible for defining SLAs, that is service level agreements, service level agreements. So these are the responsibilities of a process architect. A system architect can also be called as a PRPC application developer. He is the actual PRPC application developer 
So what the PRPC application developer may, is going to do means he'll define the class structure for the application. Define the class structure for an application. <coughs> what is the class structure as of now you don't know, right? So you need to remember that without class structure there won't be any PRPC application. We can say that a PRPC application is hierarchy of the classes. Hierarchy of the a PRPC application is organized as hierarchy of the classes. That class hierarchy we can call it as class structure. So you need to remember that without the class structure there won't be any PRPC application. If you want to define any PRPC application, first you need to define the class structure. That class structure is nothing but hierarchy of the classes. In other words, we can say a PRPC application is organized as hierarchy of the classes. We can call that class hierarchy as class structure. So that class structure is going to be defined by whom? A system architect. System architect, right? Next thing is, he'll also responsible for defining interfaces. He is also responsible for defining interfaces to integrate with external systems. He is also responsible for defining interfaces to integrate with the external system. Means from the PRPC application, if you want to communicate or talk with some other external application like SAP system or it may be mainframe system, right? Or it may be MQ, some other application which may be developed using different technologies. Using different technology, it may be developed using Java or .NET or some other technology. So to communicate with the external applications, we need to build some interfaces between the PRPC and the external system. So those interfaces are going to be built by whom? A system architect. Right? And the next one is the system administrator. System administrator is nothing but a system engineer. Right? So he is also responsible for installing and setting up the software, PRPC software. <coughs> he is also responsible for giving some privileges, right? Privileges to the users. He is also responsible for creating and managing the user accounts, right? Creating and managing the user accounts. <coughs> right? Creating and managing the user accounts. And he'll also deal with some uh, operational functions. Right? <coughs> Sorry. So these are the responsibilities of a system administrator. A system administrator is nothing but a system engineer, right? Who is responsible for installing and setting up the PRPC software as it is required by the users, right? And he'll also give some privileges to the users. And the user accounts, creating the user accounts and managing the user accounts is also done by whom? The system administrator is also going to involve in some operational functions. Some other operational functions like uh, he'll also help you in integrating with external systems. Right? Okay? Right. So these are the five types of the users. Any questions on this? Uh, Syed, Sagar and Vidya. Any questions on this? It's fine. Right. Say it. 
Uh, I have one doubt. Yeah. Uh, we have business users, no? Right. And, uh, um, and end users also are there, no? Pardon? End users. What's the difference between business, the business users? Business users means who use that the part of the customer. Yes. yes. Okay. Like if uh, if I take the example of a bank. Right. In a bank, we if I want to open open an account, I become the end user. Right. And the b bank employee becomes the business user. Right. Correct. He is going to process it. Right. Ah, yes. He is going to use application. He is going to, open to my process account. your application. Mm -hmm. You are going to raise an application. Right. As an end user from the web, right? It will be received by the uh, business user, right? He is going to process it and finally resolve it, right? Okay. Vidya. Ah, yes, I, I got it. Right, right. <laughs> Syed? Any questions? Hello? Yes, yes sir. sir, I don't have any questions. Right, right. No, sir, I don't have any questions. Right. right. Yes, but it's not going to be more. That's separate. Right? Okay. Now, here, to the users, based on the operations that can be performed by the users, we are going to assign some roles to the users. Based on what they do in the project or what they do in the application, a user can be assigned to a role. Can a user can be assigned to the multiple roles? Yes. A user can be assigned to the multiple roles. Based on their roles, they are going to have access to the different portals. They are going to have access to the portals. A user can be assigned to the roles. based on what they do in the project, in an application. A user can be assigned to multiple roles. Each role will have access to a single or multiple portals. Multiple portals. So what is a portal means? A portal is a user interface, is a user interface which allows the users to interact with the PRPC. Which allows the users to interact with the PRPC. In the last session we have seen one portal. What is that portal? developer portal. In the last session we have seen a portal called developer portal. Like that mainly we have three types of portals in the PRPC. Right? A developer portal, user portal and the manager portal. Now we have different types of users right here. The system, first one business users, right? The business users are going to have access to user portal. Then the business managers are going to have access to manager portal. The user portal can also be called as user or work user portal or it can also be called as case worker portal. 
A manager portal can also be called as work manager or case manager portal, right? Any questions? In last session we saw manager portal, I think, not the developer portal. Which one? Manager portal. Okay. Last session. We logged in with manager, administrator. No, so administrator is going to have access to a developer portal and not the manager portal. We'll see that different okay. portals, right? Okay? Okay. Right. Okay. Then, system architect. Our process architect, and then system administrator. All these three are going to have access to developer portal. All these three are going to have access to a developer portal. But a system architect and process architect, they are also going to have, going, <coughs> can have access to user portal. They can switch from developer to user portal as well as manager portal also. Means, right? System architect, system administrator, the purely is going to have access to which portal? The developer portal. A system architect or the process architect can switch between the portals. If he is in developer portal, from the developer portal he can switch to user portal to test the application. How the application is going to work in the user perspective. Right? A, a system architect or process architect, he can also switch from developer portal to manager portal also. We'll see that how these users can switch from one portal to another portal. Right? So this is about the portals and the, how the users are going to have access to the different kind of portals. Right? Mm -hmm. The business users are going to have access to user portal. The user portal, mm -hmm. now it can also be called as work user or case worker portal. In the advanced versions it, it can also be called as case worker portal. The business managers are going to have access to manager or work manager or case manager portal. And then a system architect and process architect they can have access to the multiple portals like user, manager or developer portal. Mainly when they logged in they are going to have access to this developer portal only. A system administrator is also going to have access to which portal? The developer portal. In the last session we logged into the PRPC as a administrator. That administrator is able to see which portal? The developer portal. Now we will see the remaining two portals, how they are going to be user portal and the manager portal. Right? Now we are trying to see the user portal. How it would be, right? This user portal and the manager portal can be customized as per the customer requirements. Right? See here, this is the user portal. See, if you are building this an application for a customer in the place of this Pega logo, you are going to see the customer's logo. Right? So that's why we can say that The user portal and the customer manager portal can be customized as per the customer's requirement. The developer portal it's going to be same for all the customers. The developer 